This morning, I want to talk about what He's done. Come and see what He's done. Often you look when Jesus was moving across town to town with His disciples and His uh, followers, there was a word that was ringing across every town Jesus went in, in a household when they're breaking bread and having a meal or when they are at the synagogues or when they're in the marketplace. There was a word that was ringing constantly. It was, come and see what He's done. Because wherever Jesus went, he was performing miracles. Wherever Jesus went, he was healing people. Signs and wonders were following wherever Jesus went. And the word in town was, come and see what he's done. Amen. So we, we sang that song, What He Has Done. You know, right from the start, um, you know, we're we going to look at, focus on what he's done. But right from the start, we see that God, when He created Adam and Eve, man and Eve, when He created them, the one thing that He desired was fellowship. It's not religion that Jesus or God tried to create. He created man and woman for relationship. That's why the Bible teaches us that in the cool of the day and the cool of the evening, sorry, um, that, that Jesus or God walked with Adam and He fellowshiped with Adam. Amen. But sin entered into the world or through Eve and Adam's disobedience to God and their own selfishness. Sin entered into the world which separated God from people and people from God. It brought a separation in their fellowship. And, and if you look at in our relationships today, you know, in a, in a brother, sister, mother, daughter, husband, wife, when a wife or a husband or a brother, somebody does something that you don't appreciate, it brings separation. You may not talk to them for four hours or you may not talk to them for three hours, but I hope and pray that you will talk soon. You know, um, I remember when Cara and Cara and I, this year will be 19 years we've been married, but I remember we had a first fight when I think it was on the third day of our marriage, just after we got married. It was my fault because I ruined my honeymoon, but that's a different story. I'll tell you on another day. But I remember, and then we ended up going somewhere we didn't plan, and it was on Nelson Beach in Tahuna Beach in Nelson, and um, Cara was walking 10 meters ahead of me. And I'm trying to follow her, but she wouldn't want to talk to me because she was upset with me. But this, see, sin is much more than just upset. Sin actually destroyed relationship between man and God. The Bible says in Luke chapter 10, 19 verse 10, uh, it's not on the screen. It says, um, God, uh, he came to seek and save that which was lost. You know, we are all lost at some point of time and some of you are lost. Knowledge does not save us. I, I, I was born and brought up in a Christian family, fourth generation Anglican, you know, but, but that didn't save me. I knew the scriptures. I went to Sunday school. If I didn't go, I got a smack. And when I went to Sunday school, I got a smack because I was naughty, you know, but, but that didn't save me. Religion doesn't save you. Knowledge doesn't save you. But it's that revelation about who Jesus is. That's what saves us. Amen. So Jesus has a human being. Now we look at Jesus, what he's done. As a human being, he went through uh, uh, you know, heartbreaking betrayal, excruciating pain, and a torturous and a wretched death that no man deserves to die that way. Through this, Jesus gave us a model that we should follow especially in our worst days of our life, on how Jesus lived and modeled how we should live when we go through tough times. Because we all go through tough times. Amen. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1 to 3. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1, um, sorry, 12 verse 1 to 3. Hebrews 12 verse 1 to 3. And I'm reading from the message version. It's really cool. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on. It means we'd better get on with it. <laughs> Strip down, start running, and never quit. Not ex no extra spiritual fat. 
no parasitic sin. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Underline or circle that. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Who, began, who both began and finished this race we are in. Study how he did it. Study how he did it. Because he never, that's another word, he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God. Isn't that cool? The author is saying, the Hebrews author, we don't know who the author of the book of Hebrews, but he is writing and he's saying, look, study how Jesus did it. If you're finding your life difficult right now, study how Jesus did it. If you don't have answers to your problems, study how Jesus did it. He never lost sight on where he was headed, that exhilarating finish, and with God, he could put up with anything along the way. And then he goes on to describe what are those things that he put up with. Cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor right alongside God. When you find yourself flagging in your faith, at times we all flag in our faith. At times we all have a struggle in our faith. At times we all go through, is God real? Is God really hearing my prayer? Is God really interested in my life? And when you're flagging in your faith, go over that story again. Go over that story again. One of the things that uh, we practice, Karen and I, and uh, we teach people when we are go, taking them through premarital counseling, is keep looking at your vows. Go back and look at your vows on the day when you get married, you write your own vows or you read the traditional vows. But it's good practice to go back and look at what you said on that day to your spouse. Go back and look at it because it's all nice and fancy on the day. But go back and look at it and say, that's what I said. Wow, I better keep up. Why? Because I made a promise. Anyway, are you with me? Everybody? Good on you. Very good, very good. Okay, so he's saying, and then he goes on to say, flagging in your faith, go over the story over and again, item by item. That long litany of hostility he plowed through, that will, I love this, the way he wrote it, that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. Come on. It's got, if you're a Christian, or you, you know, you got to, it's got to shoot that adrenaline. When I look at the cross, it's got to do, oh God, thank you. Amen. I carry an adrenaline EpiPen for my son. Aller allergic, allergic reactions, whatnot. But an adrenaline sh makes your heart beat fast and pumps your blood. And he's saying, when you look at this cross... When you look at what Jesus went through, when you saw that video of the nails being hammered onto his hand and through, ha through his hand to the word, let that not just make you go, oh yeah, I heard this before, but let that make you go. Let the adrenaline shoot through you. Because on that day, because of what he's done, I find my identity because of the cross. Not because of the location I live in, come on. Not because of the house I live in, or the car I drive, or the education I have, or who I'm married, or the watch I wear. I get my identity, my value, not because what I possess, or where I live, or who I hang out with. My identity comes, my value comes, my worth comes because of the cross. So when you look at your cross, or the cross... May that remind you that you are enough. May that remind you of the finished work of Christ, that I only need to walk in the finished work of Christ, and I don't need to strive, but actually work with His pattern of what He's taught me. Amen. Friday was a pain. Friday was pain, suffering, and agony. Saturday was confusion was anxious moments, was grief, was loss, was disappointment. 
I mean, think about it. Have you ever thought about it? Last Sunday was Palm Sunday. Uh, but have you ever thought about it that, you know, the, the one that will save you comes as a baby, not as a king? Have you ever thought about that, that these guys put hope in this guy called Jesus, the Messiah, and all of a sudden he died? Think about that. They, he is the one to rescue them, to set them free, but he died. The Bible actually says that the, we'll look at it soon, but how the disciples sort of did their own thing, went away and dis, did, uh, uh, in disappointment and sadness. But then Sunday was a time of joy, celebration, and victory. Amen. In our lives, we all go through all these things over and over and over and over again. We go through pain. We go through disappointment. We go through confusion. We go through loss. We go through uh, victory. We go through joy. It's over and over again. But what do we do? How do we live through that is what we're looking at here this morning. What do I do in my days of pain? What do I, how do I get through my days of confusion? And how do I get to the days of victory? Day of pain. Jesus was betrayed. He was wounded. He was picked on. He was spat on. And the crown of thorns, they just, just, just didn't put it on his head. Think about it. When you put a crown of, uh, not a thorn, but a little something on a newborn baby girl to make her look pretty, you know. There's no hair. It's bald head and you put something on the baby and everyone got cute, you know. Uh, that's cute. But what they put on Jesus was the crown of thorn and they pushed it into his skull. Amen. He took shame, beating, guilt. Jesus didn't went, just go through physical pain, emotional pain, but he also went through the spiritual pain. There's a lot of pain that Jesus has gone through. He went through the spiritual pain like no other. So what do you do when you go through pain? What do you do when you go through suffering? What do you do during those times where it's painful in your life and you've got no answers? Those Fridays, it feels like a long Friday. And Jesus understood and knows our pain. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 15, sorry, chapter 4 verse 15 says, This high priest... Of us understands our weakness, for he faced all of the same testing we do, yet he did not sin. So, if you think that what you're going through, no one understands, let me tell you maybe no one understands, but Jesus understands it. Why? Because he's been through that. Your wife may not understand. Your husband might not understand. Your adult children may not understand. Your in-laws or your parents or your boss or your employer doesn't understand. But God understands what you went through. Because the Bible teaches he went through it yet without sin. So what do I do when I go through pain? Matthew teaches us this in Matthew chapter 26. Verses from 36 to 39, it teaches us what Jesus did, what he's done. Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove. I'm reading from New Living Translation. Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. And he said, sit here while I go over to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John. And he became anguished and distressed. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little further farther, and bowed with his face to the ground and prayed, prayed. Now, there's two things that Jesus did here. Jesus was fully God and fully man. And Jesus was going through pain. And it's, it, the Bible says here that it was excruciating pain. And what did he do? He took his friends with him. He took his friends and said, would you come with me? 
Would you please come with me? Because what I'm going through. And Jesus is saying here, he's saying, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. He's not telling this to the father. He's telling it to his friends. And then he goes a little far, further and then he begins to pray. Jesus did two things here. Number one, he reached out to his friends. He didn't do life alone. Even when he was on the verge of dying and he understood the pain that he's going to go through, he didn't do it alone. He said, would you come with me? He's saying, Rupert, Shohan, would you come with me while I sit down and I'm telling you, I am feeling the pain, this grief in me. Would you journey with me? And then he goes on to pray to the Father. You know, a lot of us in our lives, when we go through pain, the first thing we do is isolate. We withdraw. We stop talking. We go into a man cave or a woman cave. A woman cave is a shopping mall. A man cave is a garage. Whatever you do. Maybe binge watching. We withdraw, we shut up, we don't talk, and we let our heart harden. But Jesus is saying, what he's done, that's the theme today, what he's done. What did Jesus do? He said, would you come with me, please? Peter, I mean, think about Peter, think about these guys. They would be thinking, excuse me, but you're God. You're the Messiah and you're saying you're going through pain and you, you know, think about that. But Jesus is being real. When, if I, if you're my friend and today I say, hey buddy, how are you doing? You go, I'm all right. Good. But the reality is your wife knows you're not all right. I'm just picking on you because you're sitting in the front row. That's what I do. Whoever sits on the front row, I pick on them. All right. And so the joke is that if you want to know about your husband, ask the wife how he's doing. Why? Because how are you doing? I'm all right. I'm good. You're not good. But you see, Jesus is displaying. And I'm telling you, we're coming out of a season of isolation. Come on. We're coming out of a season of don't me, don't. We, 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 we've been taught how to wash hands, how to sneeze. Right? So we're coming out from a place of isolation and being to ourselves. But Jesus is saying, look, find your friends and take, don't take the entire world. Take two or three people with you. Who are those two or three people that you want to take and say, Rupert, I'm struggling, man. But I'm not having a pity party with Rupert. I'm saying, would you pray with me? Would you hang with me, Rupert? Would you stay with me when I'm going through my pain? Don't judge me. Don't come and tell me, oh, Peter, that's your fault. You should have done it better than that. You should know better than that. Why aren't you reading your word? I don't want judgment. I want empathy. Not sympathy, empathy. Sympathy is feeling sorry. Empathy is really feeling the heart of God and that person and being there. I don't need you to talk to me, Rupert. I just want you to be with me. Yes, I've got a wife. But men go through stuff they can't even tell their wives. Anyway. So, when you're in pain, we remove ourselves, but God wants us to express our pain to our friends. Okay, express your pain to your friend and confess your pain to the, to the Father. That's what Jesus, he expressed his pain. I can't do this, but you're the pastor. Who cares? I'm a human being. Oh, you're a pastor, you should know everything. Well, if I know everything, I tell you what, I might as well be God. I'm not God, I'm just, just saying. There's no heresy in this place. All right, that's why we're saying, express your pain to your friends and confess your pain to God. And that's why we talked about connect groups and we're saying, please, connect with your connect group. You need somebody in your life. I have friends here. I, do you know friendship takes time? You have to invest in friendship. Amen? Doing life with them and all that stuff. Do that. 
Galatians, that's what Galatians 6.2 says, share each other's burdens and in this way obey the law of Christ. Paul is writing to the church at uh, Galatians and he's saying, share each other's burdens and this way you will obey the law of Christ. What is the law, law of Christ? Love God and love your neighbor. So God has commanded me, sorry for picking on you, welcome from Christ church, but God has commanded me that to knock on your door, it's, it is a commandment for me to look after you. That when you push me, I don't make it about you, but I force myself on to you more to make sure that you're well. That I will not leave you with the lights off, doors shut, you by yourself on your phone when you told your child, don't play on your phone. We all, come on men, we all do that. My wife very politely picked on me, the, my, not my wife, my daughter, said, Dad, you asked me not to be on my phone. Why are you on your phone? And genuinely, I was actually working. She said, honey, I'm working. And I said, thank you, God. Now, but you see, don't leave people alone. So what I'm saying, go find a connect group. Find, that's what we're saying. Do Christianity with people. Remember Jesus said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, look after my people. And then it's like Alzheimer's. Two minutes later, Jesus goes, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I just told you that two minutes ago. Then look after my people. Then they walk again and Jesus goes, Peter, do you love me? Oh, come on, this is the third time, God. Yes, I told you I love you. Peter, the problem is, I know what I'm saying. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you love me, look after people. Don't isolate you are not a man when you bottle it in. You're a man when you are real. Jesus displayed it. I'm speaking in confidence because Jesus displayed it. And our mission statement here is authentic faith and relevant expression. Have authentic faith. Don't suck it in, but find somebody to talk with. Amen. So how do we get through our pain? God and friends. You reach out by praying and you reach to your friends by sharing. Mark 14, verse, uh, uh, Mark 14, verse 35, 36 says, Abba, Father, he cried out, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. See, Jesus is being real. There are three things Jesus said. Number one, he is affirming God who God is. He's telling who God is, and then he's expressing his anguish, his pain, and his desire. Lord, would you please take this cup away from me? Then he's surrendering and saying, not my will, but your will be done. It's okay to be real. Amen. Thank you, one person, yeah. It's okay to be real. If you're hurting, it's okay to be hurting. God did not create Rambos. He didn't create Avengers who never seem to die. It's like tomorrow never dies. James Bond. Anywho. All right, my point number two is, what do you do when you go through your confusion? Not just your pain, but your confusion. Confusion, chaos, and the whole disappointment, doubt, grief. Have you ever been through confusion, pain, doubt, fear, and all that stuff? I've been through that. I still go through that, and I will continue to go through that. As long as I take my last breath. Mark 14 verse 27 says, On the way, Jesus told them, All of you will desert me, for the scripture says, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. All the disciples abandoned Jesus. I mean, think about this. We watched that video just for some Pieces of coin, you desert, you betray God. Have you betrayed God before? Have you betrayed God because you are hurting? That you walk away from God instead of walking to God? Did you ever let pain move you away from God instead of... Do you go through the... The days, you switch your days from Friday to Saturday, pain, confusion, anger, anxiety. Do you go through that, those days where you feel like, you know, you, 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 you are being betrayed and you feel that nobody ca really cares and people have let you down? Your family has let you down? 
run to God, not away from God. John 16, 16 to 22. I've picked a few verses here. It's on the screen. It says, in a little while, you won't see me anymore. But in a little while after that, you will see me again. But a little while after that, when you see me again, I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to a wonderful joy. Verse 22, so you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, then you will rejoice. And no one can rob, that jo- rob you out of that joy. Amen. No one can rob you out of that joy. God, to understand God's character, because the Bible says He never leaves us nor forsakes us. We need to understand the character of God. I love my children, but at times they are very difficult to deal with. Silvana, Brock, and Leo, more than Brock, Silvana and Leo are very good at reminding me what I promised them and if I don't keep that promise. But Dad, you said so. You told me you would take me driving range. But we can't go now. No, 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 you said so. Yeah, I don't have time right now. But you promised me. Dad, you said you will take me to the nail place. Or window shopping. That was my weak moment, honey. But you said so. Can we be like that with God? If you know the promises of God, you can walk and say, God, you said so. You told me that if I trust in you, Romans says, that you won't put me to shame. That you told me that when I give my life to you, that I will find life in you. You told me that your plans for me are good. To prosper me, to give me a hope and a future. You told me. How do I know that? Because I read the word. Come on, church. We perish. The Bible says you perish because you do not know the word. You told me so. I'm sure. I've, it's funny between Tom and Lisa. She's good at telling Tom. Tom, you said that you will do it. You didn't do it yet. And he kind of pulls his face off. Ugh. But I love it. He said, be persistent. You said so, God. I'm going to close soon. But I want to encourage you. When you go through your anxiety, when you go through your panic attacks, when you go through all those things, Come into the word of God. Hide in the shelter of the Almighty and say, God, you said it. I will do it. You said so. God is not a liar. He is not a liar. Yes, you will be disappointed. Paul said it. I was crushed, but I'm not defeated. Yes, you will get hurt, but you will not be put down. Why? Because God said so. But the challenge is, are we ready to hold on to him? And then the Sunday comes, victory. The day of victory, the day of joy, thanksgiving, celebration. God is faithful. Do you know what little things we teach children? If I give you a lollipop, say thank you. What's that about? Teaching them? Be grateful. More than manners, it's it's grateful. I can say thank you, but I don't mean it. That's manners. It's like, say sorry. Sorry. No, do it nicely. Sorry. I can make you do it. But more than manners, it's the heart. It's the, it's the godliness. It's teaching us. And I'm asking you, you know, come and celebrate. Look at what God has done. Little things saying, God, I thank you for the cross. Yes, my mother left me. Yes, my wife cheated on me. Yes, my husband betrayed me. Yes, whatever. Yes, my prayers have not been answered. I feel burnt out. I feel depressed. I feel anxious. But God, I thank you. I thank you for what you've done. 
because your word says, and I'm reminding you, God, as a mother may forget a nursing child, but you will never leave me, God, and never forsake me. And I know at the moment I'm holding your hand, but God, I do know you will never let go of me. Somebody say amen. amen. I hope you're getting this. I don't know if you know Christ or not, but I'm telling you, Jesus is real. Please, if you're a Christian, wake up from your sleep. And if you're not a Christian, I want to pray for you. And I want to say, there is a God who loves you more than you realize. More than your wife, more than your husband, more than your whatever, your 18-foot boat. Or your two inches hot wheel car. He loves you more than the toys you have. He loves you more than the gifts you possess. He loves you more than the wealth you possess. You live to die to earn wealth. But let me tell you that fridge will keep your food cold, but it, will won't, it won't keep your heart warm. You can't go hug that fridge. It won't hug you back. Amen. Sunday, just like the prodigal son, I love the story. The son comes back. Father's sitting there. The Bible says that he lifted his skirt up. In those days, you don't do that. But the father lifted his skirt up, ran to the son. And as he was talking, he shut him up with his own lips by kissing him all over his face. And he didn't say, you naughty person, you wasted my money. No, he said, come on, put the ring, robe, sandals, identity. That is Jesus. That's not the church, it's Jesus. Church is there to encourage us. Yes, we disappoint each other because church is you and I. Where you go, you find yourself. Amen. You hit one, you leave one problem, you go to another problem because you're there. Hello? It's Easter, should be a happy message. It is a happy message. More than happy is the truth. Psalm 30 verse 5 says, Weeping may endure, on the screen, till the night, but joy comes in the morning. Weeping may endure till the night, but joy comes in the morning. Can I just say this as I close tonight, to this morning? I don't know what you're going through. I don't know, maybe your own spouse don't know what you're going through. But I want to tell you, hope in Jesus. Hope in, he's not religion, he's not bunch of rules. You, you know, in, a, in your family, you all have rules. And I want to explain that. You have rules in your families because you want to bring a healthy family. You know, you put your dish, wash the dishes, or I'm not talking children, even your husband, you write lists to your husband. Clean the garage. Get petrol in my car. And if you don't do that, go to Tom's house. He's got a list on the fridge. And I'm saying to you, God is not a God of a list of you should do this, you should do that. No, he's saying, you do those things because you love me. And I do these things, I did that because I love you. It's not about a duty, it's about a relationship. It's about the desire to go, I love you, I love you God, I need you. Let's stop playing Christianity and let's become real and be real people. Stop with those plastic smiles. Don't waste money on makeup. You know, we put so much makeup on. I don't, but I'm just generalizing. We put so much makeup on to cover the sadness. But I'm saying the makeup goes before you go to bed. Sadness there. The only thing that will wipe your sadness away is the blood of Jesus. The only thing that will wipe away your broken heart is the blood of Jesus. Can I get the, 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 the team up? We've got an item for you. So as I close, they've got a song for you that they want to bless you with. And as I close, I want to say this last three points. Can you go to the next slide, please? It says... So how do we get through our difficult days? 
of our lives. See what He's done. Turn to the presence of Jesus. Teach yourself the promises of God. Trust in the prom power of Jesus. Turn to the presence of Jesus. Teach yourself the promises of Jesus. And trust in the power of Jesus.